friend of mine out in Kansas used to describe boundaries like this. She would say, you've got a fence around your yard. What does that fence look like? Is it white picket? Is it split rail? Is it chain link? Where's the gate? What kind of lock do you have on the gate? What's inside the fence? What kind of flowers do you have? What kind of trees do you have? And that fence and those flowers and those trees and whatever's inside that gate represent you and that fence represents your edges where other people may not come in unless you let them in. Now sometimes I might break the gate down and come on in anyway, but you still have the opportunity to repair that gate and preserve your boundaries. Boundaries relate to how much time will you spend with others? How much time will you spend with yourself? What kind of noise levels will you tolerate or can you relate to others in effectively and ineffectively? What about the kinds of behavior you'll tolerate from other people? Is it okay for someone else to pour your drink for you? Or do you always want to pour your own drink? Which is safer? Which helps you feel more in control and more in charge? How do you make choices faced with changes? When I talk about change, I often say you may not be able to choose the changes you face. You can choose how you deal with them. And that's a part of dealing with boundaries. And if you're relating to someone who has a history of trauma, who seems to always have needs that you can't meet, it's important to involve other people as well because it does take a community and a village to help people recover. And recover means, sometimes it means, gaining the things they've lost and sometimes it means developing new skills altogether. Looking at how do we help people learn to play because many people have histories of trauma have missed out on play. How do we offer them praise and recognition? How do we appropriately imitate the good things they're doing? How do we describe them back to them? How can we be enthusiastic with them? Because what we want folks to learn to do, especially if they're parents, is we want them to learn how to be adults around their children. And if you've grown up without the experience of being a child, it's hard to do. How do we help people develop enough tolerance that they can begin to experience what happened to them in a way that is safe? What do we do, for example, if a person has maybe a container the size of a thimble for their feelings? How do we help people increase those containers that allow them to feel more, be more, and feel worthier of life as they go along? A lot of it is through positive, healthy, pleasant relationship with boundaries and with engagement. It helps people learn how not to be taken advantage of. Now, here's the thing I want to say. If you grow up with very few reaction, you may go overboard initially, but you want to settle back to the middle. For example, if you're someone who grew up not having any fun, not knowing how to play, and your experience of watching other people play and having fun, well, what's it like? Is it seeing people walk together, talk together, visit, laugh, watch TV together? Or is it drinking and drugging and dancing and going out and partying all night long? Take a look at what your model of fun means. The more you live in your body and experience your own feelings, the more you begin to know, I'm comfortable with this, I'm not comfortable with that. And any time someone disrespects your wishes about what you're comfortable with, it's really fine to turn and walk away. In fact, it's good to even practice saying no to people.